my name is Trisha and I am um, True Color Fiber Co. on Ravelry, Ravelry and on Instagram um, and now on YouTube. So I'm a, this is a knitting podcast and um, I have always wanted to do one mostly to just kind of document my journey through knitting. Um, I've actually been knitting for 20 years or very close to it, maybe a little less, but around that. Um, and I was taught by one of my students um, when I taught high school and I still teach, but I teach younger kids now. And um, I just kind of learned that basic stitch and then self-taught everything else. Um, through books and videos and it has has just over the years become one of my favorite things to do and I'm a little bit obsessed with yarn and colors and textures so I thought a video um, podcast would be a great way to document that and um, I really enjoy watching them um, and I just thought it would be a really cool thing to do. So this is kind of my go at it. I am not an expert. Um, I don't even know if I can edit the video, <laughs> but I figure it's January 1st and I might as well give it a try because you never know. So um, it's, it's always been my goal to at some point um, do something in the fiber industry um, as a career and I've always kind of said when I retire I'll open a yarn shop and um, and, and that might still be the case but I'm just kind of um, putting myself out there more and trying to get over the uncomfortableness of um, kind of putting myself out there and um, just kind of see what happens so like I said, I'm a teacher and um, obsessed with knitting and yarn and all things fiber, felting, spinning. I kind of, you might see everything on here um, depending on what phase I'm in. And um, I have been married for, this will be, this summer will be our 20th anniversary. And um, we have three children ranging in ages from our oldest is um, our son who's eight who just turned 18 actually he's a senior and our daughter who is a freshman she is 15 and then we have our preschooler um, who is five so definitely we stay busy and <laughs> um, active in in all of their activities um, which is, is what makes knitting so perfect because I can carry it with me and do it while I'm there. So, um, we'll see how this works. Um, I don't, we'll see about sound. I'm, and I'm sure I say um too much and lighting might not be great. My husband actually got me a, one of these podcaster ring lights for Christmas and I'm not using it yet because other than the tripod, because I actually, um, haven't figured out how to bounce the light so that it doesn't show the rings in my glasses. Um, we'll see. I don't, I'll, I'll figure it out at some point. Just like the editing, I suppose. So, let's get started. Um, the first, I want to start with finished objects. So I've got a couple. I've just got two to share with you. And the first one is kind of a monster that I recently finished before I started all the gift knitting gift knitting um, for this Christmas, which I no longer have. So some of those are posted on Instagram. You might, if you want to see those projects, but this was finished just before all of that. And it is my Ilya sweater. I think that's how you say it. I can't see if it's showing. Maybe I'll wear this in a future podcast, but it is by Michelle Wong. I think that's how you say her name. She is a cable genius, and I am sure that this is not perfect. Um, 
I especially had some trouble with the the arms. So where you, yeah, it, the armholes on the body and on the sleeves actually, like where to, how to adjust the cables as you were decreasing. I, I totally kind of just winged, <laughs> winged it a little bit because I wasn't sure. I mean, I think it turned out okay. I, there's so many cables. I don't think that anyone is looking at it going, oh, she messed up on the cables. I'll show you what it looks like. The other thing that I did not do very well in this was um, the sleeves in general. I made them way too long to the point that when I finished, there, you can kind of see how it's very oversized. It's very boxy. Um, I haven't quite figured out what to wear under it. I, I It may be too boxy, I don't know. It's very kind of like cozy and comfy, but, um, I haven't quite gotten used to or being comfortable just wearing it around because it might be too big. You can see how big, like it's almost kimono-y sleeves. Um, but I made the sleeves way too long originally, way too long. In fact, hold on, I dropped it. Um, I, cu I cut them, so they were they were way past my hands to the point that if I had rolled up the cuff and then, <laughs> um, and then, you know, tried to wear it, it still would have looked like I was wearing a basketball player's sweater because, you know, my son is six, five, so it probably would have been perfect on his arms, but on me, I'm a shorty, so it did not work. And so I cut this much off and I said, you know, I spent all this time on the sweater. I'm going to, I have to be able to wear it. So I wasn't willing to re-knit the whole sleeve because it took a long, so long that I was just, I was done. So, um, so I re-knit it and, or I cut it and I kind of picked back so that I had to live stitches that weren't a mess and then I um, put the needle on and then I knit it from the, the cuff. I knit the cuff again, um, only from the sleeve down. So originally the sweater starts at the cuff and then you knit up and increase and then you decrease for the shoulder. This time though, I, I went the opposite way and it turned out fine. The sleeves, this is the sleeve now, the actual sleeve of the sweater. And it, it works. So that was a little bit nerve wracking, but, but I made it work and I was kind of happy with it. My second finished object, which also has been finished for a little while before Christmas, is my Ziggy shawl. pretty. And this pattern is by Hohi Locatelli. And it's, um, I actually did it. I kind of, I kept tagging it in Instagram as the, the Hohi fall, um, cow. I think I just showed it to you backwards. Actually, there's the front. That's better, isn't it? <laughs> And there's a snag there already. Ignore that. I'll have to, uh, there we go, crochet hook that back in. But it is a triangular shawl and it has this peacoat edging at the bottom, which is super pretty. There we go. And the yarn is by Spun Right Round and it is um, in her Holy Crow colorway, which I'm a sucker for a good name 
um, and yarn and nail polish. So Holy Crow is that that color and I love it. I've actually worn this. This is probably one of my most worn items because it's fairly neutral. I wear a lot of gray and black and um, so yeah, I wear it all the time and it's kind of cozy. It's nice and big. This is kind of how I style it. I wrap it around kind of handkerchief style. So I love it. I love triangular shawls and um, I love a good asymmetrical shawl. I'm I'm not so big on rectangular just because I find them harder to, I, I'm just, I don't know how to style them very well. So um, now works in progress. I have a lot. I'm only going to show you the ones that I am currently actively trying to whittle down. Um, I'm also doing a test knit right now, which has taken full priority, but um, before I started the test knit, I have some works in progress. They, these are socks for my husband, and I had really hoped to maybe get them done for him for Christmas, but then I started gift knitting a hat for my um, oldest, my son's friend, one of his best friends. And um, I made slipper socks for my mom. And so I just kind of got caught up in that instead of my sweet husband because I know he'll be here and he'll love them whenever he gets them. And he's known about these for a while. It's not a secret. So this yarn is um, by Destination Yarn, who is an Ohio girl like me. Um, she's based out of Cleveland. I believe Cleveland area and she's at a lot of the yarn shows I get to go to because or the festivals because she's from Ohio and most of them that I go to are in Ohio so um, I love her yarn I've knit several things with it and her colorways this is one of her um, Game of Thrones colorways oh I totally blanked on that for a second so Game of Thrones colorway, and I can't remember the name of it, but I actually think I remember um, that when I bought it and I looked on her website, I didn't think it was the colorway that it would, was labeled. I thought looking at pictures, it was something different, but still Game of Thrones, but like it was labeled wrong or something. So I'll have to look that up and I'll try to link it below. So this is a 72 stitch um, sock, just basic sock. I think I probably used the um, Susan B. Anderson pattern to kind of go off of. Socks I can kind of do just without thinking. Until I get to the heel, I have to look at something just to jog my memory. Um, I mean, I know it's half the stitches of the sock, but whether this is a drop down heel and gusset. Um, I do do fish lips kiss a lot, but for him, he has such big feet that I mean, he wears a size 13. So I've still got a ways to go on the foot and then I'll start the toe. I need to try them on him to see how much farther I have to go. And then I had already started the second sock. So I'm not to the heel yet, but almost it's getting close not too much farther and I knit these on nine inch circulars zings try to pull them out so you can see yep so when I'm doing a vanilla sock I love the nine inch circulars just because it flies and they can go fast and they don't bother my hands um, I haven't had any trouble with that I actually like to switch it up all the time with what needles I'm using. I love using DPNs. I love using um, Magic Loop, although I've probably gotten farthest away from that at this point. Um, 
probably DPNs, nine inch circulars. And then I have the Addy, I wanna call her Flips. If I'm doing a sock that has a pattern on the front and plain on the back, um, a lot of Mina Phillips patterns are like that, then I like to use those because then I know the front needle is the pattern and the back needle is the plain. So I like those as well. Oh, and my stitch marker. Oh, can you see it? It is an Ann Tudor stitch marker. Can't tell if it's in focus. It's her Little Mermaid. And I have a lot of her stitch markers because I love them. They're made of glass. So those are the socks for my husband. My next work in progress is a ranunculus sweater which is all but done. It should be done. It's on large needles. I've literally just have to finish the sleeves. And originally, this is it. Originally, I had made the sleeves um, short because I this is old stash yarn. It's Noro. Can't remember what kind of Noro. They don't make it anymore. It's been discontinued, but I had enough. And so originally I made the sleeves fairly short because I thought, oh, that'll look good. And I was afraid of running out of yarn. I did not make it as cropped. It, it comes just past the waist. And I go back and forth. It's kind of not me. It's kind of stripey, but kind of think it's pretty too so we'll see I think that's why I've been kind of dragging my feet because I'm not sure if I'll wear it even though I like it I'm just not sure I'll like it on me I'm a little worried um, I thought oh I'll finish it and wear it at Christmas because you know it's green and why not but then I didn't I got busy doing gift knits um, but I I realized I had plenty of yarn still, and so I actually um, am making the sleeves a little longer. I'm not going to make them full length, but I'm thinking like three quarters is what I'm going for. So it should go really fast. It's on, I think these are 10, size 10 needles. Um, I just have to sit down and do it. but. At this point, it's gonna be after the test knit that I'm doing because that takes priority. And I only have a couple weeks to do it, so we'll see. Another sweater, I got on a sweater kick. And hold on just a second because I dropped a ball of yarn, or a skein of yarn. Okay, so this next sweater that I started and I was, again, hoping to finish it so I could wear it for Christmas and I didn't. Um, it's in, this is it, I'll show it to you first. It's so pretty. It's Mad Tosh um, and it's Farm Twist, I think. Let me double check that. Yeah, Farm Twist, Mad Tosh. And I just couldn't resist the color. That's gonna be backwards, but that's okay. Um, it is 100% merino wool, it's DK weight, and it's 225 yards in a skein. So I thought that was kinda awesome. And it's got some awesome like pinks and purples and fuchsias, which are totally a color that I love. Um, and the color name is Vintage Sari. So it's inspired by those beautiful Sari silks, the vibrant colors. I love it. And I knew when I saw it at a fairly local yarn store. I call it local Columbus in the middle of the state. I am about an hour from there. But, um, but we go there a lot because my kids have ball games and um, shopping, you know, whatever, we, we go there often. So the pattern that I chose for this is 
an antler cardigan by Tin Can Knits. That's kind of good coloring right there. Maybe a little purple or purple, let me see. Yeah, it's really a pretty vibrant fuchsia with these purples in. Here's the front. And I'm on the yoke. The sleeves are done because you actually do those first. And, um, but yeah, no sleeve island, which is kind of awesome. I love her patterns. I, the socks, the slipper socks that I did for my mom for Christmas, I used her, um, rye pattern and they, they she just does really awesome patterns. So there you can see the cabling and the color and I love it. So I really just have to finish the yoke. Um, and then of course the neck decreases and then do the button band on the front. No idea what buttons I'm going to use for this. They've got to be awesome. I also am hoping that I'm not playing too risky of a game of yarn chicken. I have a whole skein left that I showed you in the beginning, but, um, and a pretty significant part of a skein that I'm working on right now. So I think I'll be okay. But when you get to that last skein, you just kind of worry. So that's that. And then my next and actually last work in progress um, is going to be acquisitions leading into what I'm test, knit, test knitting. So the first acquisition that I have gotten, um, and I got this after Christmas, is the latest edition of Making, which I just love, love, love this magazine. Or actually, it's more like a book. I call it a book because it's just beautiful. And um, I've made a few things from, I have all of them. I've made a few things from them. Um, the one, there's several in this issue that I want to cast on or separate. I mean, there's different media in here, like sewing. Um, but this, this is probably going to be a definite. I haven't done a make nine ever, but I think I'm going to put one together. I don't have it done yet. I'm not that with it. You'll find that out. So it's called the growth ring shawl. And um, it mimics like a tree, the rings in a tree. And I'm, I love that. I'm kind of obsessed with um, that pattern. Um, I don't know, something about it I really like. So that was one thing. And then my second acquisition, which I ordered before Christmas, and I got it right after, like the day after Christmas, because they are amazing. Um, so this was kind of a Christmas present because I got some Christmas money from my parents and the in-laws, and um, so I ordered some nightshades, which I have been wanting to try for a long time. I don't know if there you can kind of see it. Sorry if it's not focusing very well. That's a little better. So it's the nightshades color or nightshade. It is nightshades yarn. It's the talk radio color and it's got these awesome little purple flecks. So when you look at it in kind of um, not bright light, it mostly looks, it looks black, pretty black. I think you'd have to look really closely, but then when you hit it just right in the light, it's these amazing little vibrant purple woven throughout it. And it's Cormo, um, let's see, American Cormo and wool, wool and spun, 250 yards, and it's DK weight, grown in Montana, spun in New Hampshire by Harrisville Designs. And I love it. I ordered it specifically for the test knit that I'm working on. And it came so fast. I am so impressed with um, just how quickly it came. And the company itself 
and it definitely won't be my last time using it. Um, and on that same note, so I've got a sweater's quantity. Mm -hmm. And um, it came with these little design booklets, like uh, examples of their um, patterns knit in the nightshade yarn. And I kind of love this. Isn't that pretty? Here's another close up of the yoke. Um, it is the May pullover and it just, I, I love that kind of a little bit toothier yarn, which this is, it's soft. It's definitely next to the skin soft. I don't think that'll be a problem, but it's, it's along the lines of, um, it's softer than Brooklyn Tweed, I think, which the Ilya cardigan was in Brooklyn Tweed loft. Um, it's softer than Brooklyn Tweed, but, but definitely more of a wooly, it's wool, um, not as soft as Merino, but I kind of like, I like the more rustic yarns, something about, I don't know, I like knitting with them, I mean, I like Merino too, but I do, I do like those. The other one in this booklet, I'm, this is so not me. Um, but I would kind of love to try it is this Ellera pullover and they've shown this on the Instagram. It's a crochet pattern and I do crochet too. Ooh, back up. There's a close up. I just love the texture on it. I don't, there's something about it. Um, mostly when I crochet, it is with, um, it's for blankets or dishcloths or things like that. More utilitarian, not wearables, but that is a, a crocheted garment that I think is really beautiful. So I started knitting with it and this is my test knit, which you probably are not gonna be able to see very well. Let's see if I can get closer. You get it? So it's called the Bobbles and Braids Pullover. I think that's the official name of it. It is by um, Ann Lupton of Boho Fiber Company. And um, I'm not going to show a picture of the finished one because I'm not sure. I mean, she did post a, a partial picture on her Instagram. So you can look at that. But... I wasn't, I'm not sure how much I should share yet. And I think the pattern is supposed to be released January 14th. So I've got to get it done by then. I'm knitting very quickly while I'm still on Christmas break for the next, well, tomorrow I go back to work. But um, I have the weekend and I think once I get the body done, it'll go fairly quickly. It um, is kind of a boxy shape. It's hard to tell because my needles have it all scrunched up. And it's got these cables, kind of stripes, and then these bobble rows in between. So it's kind of like a vertically striped pattern a little bit. And I think I would love it. It's bottom up. If you can't tell, this is the bottom. And um, you knit up to the arms which I haven't got that far yet. So that's what I'm working on. This is all my focus right here, right now, is getting this done. So I should be able to show it to you maybe by the next podcast. Um, and this again is an Ann Tudor stitch marker, my little sheepy. He's so cute. He's one of my favorites. And I have Here's my beginning of the round marker. This is also, <laughs> you're sensing a theme. I am using all Ann Tudor stitch markers. This one, it's a little yellow lab. Oh, he's not gonna focus very well. But um, I got that one because my dog, Harper, we have a yellow lab, so it's also one of my favorites. 
and makes me happy when I look at him. And those I'm keeping, the other ones I'm keeping just kind of in a big bag because I don't, I don't have a ton of project bags. It's something I need to probably get some more of considering the whips that I have going on. Um, but this one's in my field bag, which is my favorite. I have a few other sock bags. Um, my socks are in this one. I love colorful sheep so I have a few different bags but not enough for all my whips I should probably have less whips but it's okay um so I think that's it for today which is good because I was hoping it'd be around half an hour um let me know if anybody watches this and um, if you have any suggestions or comments, I would welcome them. Um, constructive criticism is always good because again, I don't really know what I'm doing, um, but I've been wanting to do it forever. And I kept, I've had this, this mental block like, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. It needs to be perfect. I need to have a cute background or, um, like I put all this emphasis on the getting ready and then took no steps to actually doing it, which is so silly. It's, that's all in my mental head. So this year I am going to focus on just really, um, just taking steps, right? To, whatever goal it might be. So um, whether that's my health and fitness, um, a more kind of positive self-speak um, or acceptance um, or taking steps like this to just put myself out there and make new friends and meet others that love the same thing that I do. We have a little local knitting group around um, town that meets every couple weeks, but I usually can't go because my kids have, they meet on Saturday mornings and um, my kids are almost always doing things on Saturday mornings. And um, so, and we don't have a local yarn shop and the closest one's an hour away. So I just wanted to kind of Put myself out there, meet some more people, um, and stop kind of being afraid of the what people think and um, document making. So I hope everyone had a wonderful new year and I'm hoping to do this. Um, my goal is gonna be bi-weekly, like once every two weeks. If I said bi-monthly, that would be bi-monthly. Um, it may just be once a month. We'll see. Lighting in the winter in Ohio is not great. So, um, that might determine some of it, but I will definitely see you again. And if you watch the whole thing, thank you.